On this trip, we're going to be heading down to the UK's south coast. It's going to be our first adventure in our van Sam, and we're going to show you some amazing places. We're going to take you to a wildlife haven where you need to catch two boats to get there. We're going to show you some amazing beaches, three campsites, and the UK's only natural world heritage site. So I've been wanting a top box for our van for ages, but all the ones that I keep finding are far too much money right now. Our journey was 140 miles, taking us down to the south coast from Northamptonshire. This is the longest journey we've taken our 2007 High Ace on, and we were intrigued to see how it got on. After a three hour drive we arrived at our first campsite. This woodland site doesn't have marked pictures, which means you can park anywhere. We parked under these trees. You'll find this campsite between the Corf Castle and Studland, on the Dorset Isle of Purbeck. Yeah, definitely. You can't go camping without having a campfire, so we rented a fire pit from the on-site shop. It cost us £7 for the pit and £7 for the logs. And the pitch cost us 28 quid for the night. And our bodge job top box made it in one piece. And so did Sam the van. having our dinner this evening. How cool is this? As well as delivering the normal menu on the dinner time, you can get the occasional pizza night here too. But if you're like me and you can't start the day without a coffee, <coughs> then you'd be happy with this because it opens at 8am. Okay, dinner is served guys. Let's see what we have got. Ooh, yeah these look good. This is dinner! Wings and chips, because the other choice this was burgers and I don't really like burgers, so we've got wings and chips, Louis's got a burger, cup of tea, and I think it's got 22 quid, so two bad spades. Right, Louis is hopefully getting the fire pit on, I have asked him. We've got the logs, got everything for it, we've hired the fire pit from the little camping shop, so that's good. Didn't get any marshmallows, we forgot about that, but they did sell them, so now I'm just making the inside cosy getting all the cushions in the um, in the cushion covers and yeah sort of unpacking our little kitchen and um, that's our setup all ready to go. Uh, there's a little Robin who sat there on that little chair, jumped up on a table and jumped on a man I've got Yeah, tomorrow we're going to head out over to Brown Sea Island. We're going to jump on a ferry. So that's £9 each return. Uh, but you can only go for like a particular slot. So you've got to go, the time slot says there. So you get the ferry over at say 10. And then I think you've got like three hours or so there. And then you've got to come back. But I think nine quid's pretty decent. And if you're a National Trust member, you do have to pay for the ferry. But you'd have to pay entry to get onto the island. Sal so went off to explore the campsite and check out the facilities. I researched the next day while enjoying a beer next to the campfire. Actually, they're, they're really good. <laughs> and the showers are good, and there's no spiders. <laughs> That's what I've looked for on top of the shower block. <laughs> no, but there's, um, you know, no spiderage, and there is none. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, I'm in bed, in the van. And I thought I would have something really like, you know, woo, oh, he said that, but I got anything to stir. Apart from, uh, see you in the morning, guys. Peace out! That's enough of that.
Let's go. So, Brancy Island is an island in Poole Harbour. Yeah, National Trust Nature Reserve. So, we're going to check that out and try and show you what it's like, basically. Right, okay, so it's time to leave this campsite. Pretty good, to be honest. It's nice. And um, what was cool about it is you can just literally just pull up wherever you want. And, uh, yeah, just pick your own pitch. They're not marked out or anything like that. So, if you want to be under the trees, you can be under the trees. If you want to be under the sun, you can be under the sun. So, yeah, pretty decent. Okay, so the place where we just stayed is a 15 minute drive to the chain ferry, so actually quite close. To get across to the National Trust ferry, you do have to catch another boat. This is a chain ferry. You can take your vehicle on there or you can go on foot. We chose to go on foot and it only costs a pound. Right, this is the ferry, the little chain ferry. I don't know how they do ferries, but I think you can just about handle this one because you can see the other side. Check this out. This is Shell Beach that you can see behind me here somewhere. Oh, it's so nice. I mean, it's really dull today, but if this was a sunny day, that would be properly nice. In this episode, we're going to show you the beautiful beaches of Sandbank <laughs> on a chain ferry that's going to take 10 minutes to get across. <laughs> and hopefully we might bump into Harry Redknapp because he lives in Sandbank. Ferry number one. If you take the ferry on foot, there's a National Trust car park at the Shell Bay side. Obviously, if you're a National Trust member, this is free. First, we need to the ferry. The car park is just a couple of minutes walk from the ferry park, or a couple of minutes walk over to Shell Beach. Once you've disembarked the ferry, finding the National Trust dock is really, really easy. Cheers, mate. Just turn to the left, and it's right there. The boat that takes you across is only small, so our advice would be to book ahead to make sure you get a seat. There are only 20 seats available for each crossing. This is feeling a little bit rough today. Not really a smooth sailing like the other one, is it? I'm glad this isn't a long trip. So, I think we're heading this way. Brownsea Island is owned and managed by the National Trust. Yeah, okay. The northern part of the island is looked after by the Dorset Wildlife Trust. Sadly, when we went, we couldn't access this part of the island. On our return, we did check the website and it is closed until further notice, so please make sure you check this if you go. Look at that beach down there. It's like a desert island down here. I suppose technically it is, it's just a British desert island. Which means that the weather is, well, uh, crap. The typical English weather didn't detract from how beautiful this beach really was. And do you know what guys, right, if you'd have got here last week when it was a heat wave, this would have been so sick, honestly, it would have been amazing. You might as well have been in Caribbean, for real. Yeah, the lady that uh, used to live on this island, I don't know if she used to own it or live on it, um, she went on a painting holiday to the Isles of Scilly and was inspired by all the bull plantations, so she decided to come back to Brownsea Island and recreate it herself, and that's how all the daffodils started growing on the island. I can't get over how amazing that beach was, but you can only come here for a couple of hours because the boat over is at a set time and the boat back's at a set time, so... It's a shame really, it's not like you can come over and just have a day of sunbathing on probably the best beach I've seen around here. Well you get three hours. But I suppose it stops, you know, people coming down later in the place and ruining it. Right, so I'm now looking for a hatch because I think that the other end of the plane is down that way somewhere. If we find the hatch, we'll get the numbers, we're in! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretending he's in Lost, guys. So we need to walk round there to the pottery pier, the ruins of Maryland Village and then back round, I guess, through the woods, because you can't go on the wildlife but anyway, because that's shut. Uh, and back to Brew with a View. Sal so reckon she's a pirate with a little treasure map, look, and the treasure's Brew with a View. So if you do want to come here and enjoy the beach, I've just figured out how you do it. You've got to hire one of these tents for a few days, or one of them houses, I reckon they're for rent as well. So when we get back, we'll have a look and see if they are. We've reached Scoutstone. Okay, this is where scouting and guiding first originated. It's on the shore of the island, right near the bell tents. 
Back in 1907, there was an experimental camp here, and that gave rise to the birth of the scouting movement. The National Trust bought the island back in 1962, and they rebuilt the scouting camp in the same location as the original. When different scout groups from across the world visit the island, they leave one of these signs behind to show that they've been. Come on, Lou, want to get an ice cream? Let's go. As we couldn't get into the wildlife sanctuary, we went looking for other stuff. We found lots of peacocks, especially baby ones. We saw these guys and I just tried to get the shots. Turns out the dad wasn't too happy with me about it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> He's not happy, is he? Right, so we've been a bit lost for the past, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, and we've been trying to figure out where we are, but we've just found this little sign here, look. And the time is, and the boat leaves at 10 to. So, we've got to try and get back. We've probably got enough time, we should have 10 minutes to spare. So that but, means brew with a view? But brew with a view might be no. No, that's the treasure. Brew with a view is Or a treasure. missed boat. Brew with a view or a missed boat. Right, well it might have to be a quick brew with a view and get on the boat. Ooh, moody! I reckon it was an overestimation when they said 35 minutes. I think we're going to do it in about 20. I reckon they designed that for all people, that map. Oh yeah, now all people will watch this and be like, oh, that's not very nice. I don't think all people are watching this. I checked my analytics and it's not true. Time to get treasure. Brew with a view. And we finished the day off with a tiffin and a coffee with a view. And just like that, our time on Brown Sea Island was over. Join us in the next episode when we visit a lighthouse, a natural world heritage site, and a Jurassic Bay. We really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you get something useful out of it. Let us know if you're planning a trip to Brownsea Island and if you did enjoy the video please drop a like on this, it would be really really helpful to us. We'll leave links for everything that we've done in the description so if you want to check out the campsites or the boat or the island you absolutely could just follow those links and get it booked. We love making this content for you and we can't wait to see you on the next one. Right guys, I know it's cloudy and all that but wait till you see this beach man. Can you even believe that this is England? Look at this. Right guys, we're going to finish up the video for Brownsea Island here. We're going to chill out on Shell Bay for a little bit and then we're going to head back to the van. And I'm going to hunt some seashells. And then we're definitely going to head back to the van and then we're <laughs> going to go to the campsite. So see you tomorrow.